I'm going to demonstrate ISTAP. So this is the programming uh, application for BMW. So double click on the desktop icon to launch the loader. And it takes can take 20 seconds to load. Right, there we are. So this is the, the loader. Basically, you've got options along the top. Uh, reset settings. Don't touch that because the settings are all as they should be. So the, the uh, two options here are start with the K plus DCAN cable uh, to emulate ICOM, uh, which is the communication box that the BMW dealers use. Basically it's just a, a box with a bit of processing power um, that rather than you have multiple cables connecting to your laptop, you have a single cable going to the ICOM box uh, that sits in the car, by the car, and then you just plug in whichever interface cable you need for that, for that vehicle. Um, so in this case we, we're using a K plus DCAN cable uh, so we're going to select that. If we're on a F or G series or uh, version of BMW that uses Ethernet, then we click on the Enet icon emulator. What you need to bear in mind is that the very first thing you do is you double click on whichever icon appertains to the cable that, that you're using. So always do that first. We've already clicked on uh, switch K plus DCAN on. Um, so now we're going to start the K plus DCAN ICOM emulator. Again, it takes a few seconds, but it will tell you once it's started. Right, see here, ICOM emulator now running, and here it says emulator now running. So the next thing we do is we select the uh, programming application relevant for the vehicle that we're talking to. So in this case, it will be BMW car, or if it's a Mini, obviously click on Mini. If it's a motorbike, click on BMW motorbike, uh, or Rolls-Royce if you're lucky enough to have one of those. So we'll click on BMW with the car. Now, ISTAP does take quite a while to initialize, and it goes through various um, initialization functions, so you just need to be patient. One thing I will say is that this is going to be slower than real life because I'm actually uh, recording this on the screen at the same time. So obviously my laptop processor is doing a lot more than it would normally. Um, so it probably takes about half the time. But what we have done is we've edited the video so you're not sat there just staring at something for ages. Okay, um, the application is loaded now, and what you need to do to start the session to the vehicle is click on the tab Create New Session, and go for the option that should be selected, which is Select ISTAP Server Automatically. Now this is where we are cheating the software um, by making it think it's talking to the BMW server on their network, whereas in fact it's talking to a local server set up on the laptop itself. And all of the um, programming coding files are stored locally on the laptop as well. Um, in this case up to uh, the end of 2017, so um, there should be plenty of um, uh, software there to cover all of the options for programming and coding. So we'll click on continue. Now again it goes through different different initialization phases. It will take a while. So you just need to be patient. Here we're on the connection manager window. So we click on left click on K plus DCAN USB with the IP number. Uh, that's our ICOM emulator. So essentially that just means that our K plus D can cable with that IP 
is talking to an ICOM emulator that itself then talks to the vehicle. So as far as the application goes, it thinks it's talking to the vehicle through an actual physical ICOM interface box. So we click on connect. Now, unlike the diagnostic software, it will go through each of these bit by bit. So the first thing it will come up with is the vehicle ID number. And then it will give you a few seconds later, or half a minute later, the uh, series, whether it's an E90 or whatever. So bottom uh, left, you can see connection with runtime systems being established. Again, it thinks it's talking to the BMW server, uh, which is actually local on the laptop. So we should shortly get the uh, the VIN number displayed. So there's the uh, VIN number. And that's determining the model series. So it should come up uh, E90, I think this one is. So here we have a session preparation window that crops up. This is basically getting you to say um, were control modules replaced? So in this case it's no. Obviously if you've replaced one you'd say yes. And it's just a little warning here uh, before starting vehicle programming ensure that the basic requirements for error free programming are satisfied. So basically it wants you to have uh, a battery charger connected because a lot of the programming can take quite a while um, and you shouldn't have the engine running or, or any cables coming out of the window because sometimes it needs to wind windows up and down and so on. So it's, it's more of a safety warning than anything. So once we click on that, continue, we can click on and it will carry on now. Vehicle access is being checked. So it will start very soon to to look at the different modules on the car. Okay, we've got another window here. Uh, missing interface at most direct access point. Uh, with many BMWs now, uh, they have a, a second most connector, um, normally situated in the footwell behind the pedals, and you can connect direct into that. Uh, but we're going to ignore that because we're going to carry on on our K plus D can ICOM emulator connection. So just click on OK. So here last treated with ISDA 2.37.2. .2. So it's just going through all of the modules now and identifying them all. Okay, so it's completed all of the initialization um, phases that it has to go through. So vehicle details, uh, optional extras that uh, that can be included in this particular car. Okay, now if we look on control module trim. So these are all of your control modules in the vehicle. Uh, the ones here in blue are highlighted. If you just hover over each of these, it just tells you which modules they are. Some of these are on amber, which means that they may need updating. And you've got some options bottom right here. Uh, select complete car coding. So that does the whole lot for all of the modules that need coding. Um, determining measures plan and remove measures. If you click on process control, so process uh, control modules, gives you a whole list here. Status on the left, so those that are amber means that they have 
actions pending against him. And the actions are under programming, encoding and replacement. So this is where you can actually replace modules as well as um, code and, and program. So if I click on one, uh, I, c I have a, an option here. Uh, control module information gives me all of the, the basic um, info I need on that module. And a plan, so I can actually create my plan, program code, replace, or replacement follow-up. Action list, if you click on action list. So now if I go up to the top and click on vehicle. So we have tabs along here. Conversions, conversions coding only, programming, follow up routine and immediate actions and vehicle actions. So I just clicked on display measures plan and it's completing the measures plan. So this was for deactivating the front and rear fog lights. OK, it's come up with the measures plan now. Estimated total duration 14 minutes 6 seconds. OK, so deactivating fog lights, we now have our measures plan displayed. So it gives you all of the information that you need about the plan and what's going to happen, all of the actions, post-programming, initialisations, data recovery and so on. And you should find that if you click on action list that my selection of deactivating fog lights has been added to the action list so bearing in mind this action list controls all of the outstanding actions that uh, the software thinks needs uh, doing to the modules so updating various modules on the vehicle so somewhere on this list now so here we are conversion which is what we selected from the conversion tab and deactivate fog lamps. So if I was to go back and select more conversions they would uh, undergo the measures plan, it would tell you how long that conversion is going to take and add it to the action list. At the bottom right here it says accept measures plan um, and basically you then go on to click OK and it will go through all of this um, and do all of the updating and conversion programming coding. So that's just a very basic uh, intro. Let's just click on back. I'll now just click on the the cross to close down the display measures plan. Okay, so it's now come out of the uh, display measures plan uh, window. We're back here to the the main menu where we've got our main tabs. and our action list where we've got deactivate fog lamps there so essentially you can go through each of these go back to vehicle so that's our conversions we can select other conversions we can go to conversions coding only which gives you these options for resetting oil service interval the mileage deactivating driver uh, seat belt reminder, deactivate front passenger seat belt reminder, and retrofit various batteries and portable navigation system. 
what it will display in terms of what you can do in terms of conversion, retrofitting, activating, deactivating, programming, is all based on it reading the modules for that particular vehicle and it will only display and allow you to do uh, what's possible for that vehicle. So essentially you can't go wrong. So if I go on to programming follow-up routine, so this gives you some other options here as to what can be um, adjusted. Cast, can cal cast calibration, uh, steering angle sensor, acceleration sensor without active steering, clear fault code memory, deactivate compressor running in protection, RDC warning, power window regulators front and rear, DSC unit, injection quantity compensation and you can save most configuration and you've got power steering, electromechanical power steering option there as well. Display complete if you click on it just gives you all of the information on on the screen. Sometimes the screen is, is summarized by the software so clicking on that will display anything that's that's hidden. Vehicle action, so you can click on here for complete car coding uh, or import vehicle order. If we click on the top maintenance tab, and data management tab, so data management tab, you can import activation code, delete activation code, import vehicle order, and delete vehicle order. You just click on the bottom right to import. And that is the basics of the programming application. I'm not going to actually do anything because obviously it's going to take quite a while to, to program and code various things. But it's all there uh, and it shows you that what the capabilities of of the software. Thank you.